everyone. So I am once again feeling very excited because I'm doing something that's kind of kicking off something new in my garden. And that is I'm going to be potting up some fruit trees that I will be growing this year and hopefully continuing on into the future years. So I think 2023 is going to be the year of the fruit tree. Now I keep saying these are my first fruit trees, but I do have a lemon tree. I think because lemon trees aren't native to Chicago, I almost think of it as like a house plant that I have to bring in and out and not like a traditional fruit tree, even though it is. So technically I do already have a fruit tree, but these will be the first that are actually meant for my zone. Um, I do have blueberry and raspberry bushes, but nothing tree-like. And some of these, they are all technically dwarf varieties. I think they can get up to like five or six feet. So I will be kind of pruning them and helping them maintain a slightly smaller size. So we'll kind of see how everything goes. I've never done anything like this before with trees that might get tall, although they're not tall yet. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I will rehome these trees, but I want to try so I know if it'll work instead of just assuming that it won't. So with all of that, let me show you what trees I am growing. Now I do have on the way two apple trees that are not here yet. I got those from Park Seed in a set that set is all sold out, um, but I will link down below. Well, at least when I checked about a week ago, it was all sold out. I'll link down below if it is still there. Maybe they have some other smaller fruit trees. But then I got two cherry trees from Spring Hill Nursery. So this is the first one that came. So for all of these that I ordered online, I think I ordered them in January or February, and then they ship them out when it's proper for your growing zone for them to actually be outside. Um, we are inside today because it's supposed to rain, so I'm gonna pop these up in here, which may cause a mess, and I know if I stay inside, it won't rain, but if I go outside and try to pop them up, it will rain, because that's how Mother Nature works. So anyway, this is a Wow's a Dwarf Cherry Tree. Now you can kind of see how small this one is. It's maybe just under a foot tall, so it'll be a while for these to really put on some height and produce fruit. I think it's set about three to four years to produce fruit, which is weird to think about because I will be turning 37 soon. So that means when I hit 40, I might be able to get some cherries. So yeah, that is the Wowza Dwarf Cherry. I'll go over more details in just a second, but I thought that one was small. And then I got this one. Um, so it just came in this little bag. I haven't done any repotting yet. I think I got the Wowza Cherry Tree last week. This one I just got yesterday and it's in this plastic bag. So that's why I want to get these potted up today, but this one is the Cherry Dwarf Romeo. So let's go over the details and I will link these plants down below. I think both of the cherry trees are still in stock. Um, a lot of the information about these two trees is similar. So both of them are tart cherries. Uh, I'll probably be making jam with these, but I also don't mind tart fruit. Like I eat lemons whole. Um, so for me, Tart really doesn't mean that I won't be eating it raw either. They're zone two, so they should be fine left out in pots over winter. I'm gonna do a little bit something different while they're still small, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, they're both full sun. They both are self-pollinating, but again, if you, even if you have self-pollinating, it does help to produce even more fruit if there's similar plants nearby. Um, it'll take three years to get fruit. And then on the website, it's suggested using at least a 20 gallon pot for these cherry trees. Now, I was thinking, I was kind of going back and forth. I didn't know if it would make more sense to get a 20 gallon pot now and plant the small trees in that. Now that would look a bit odd, especially with this one right here. But I was also thinking, I mean, that means the pots won't dry out as fast. So if we're gone for the weekend, I don't have to worry about that. Um, it also means that I won't have to worry about repotting and it will insulate the roots more in winter. On the other side, I was thinking, well, maybe I just start with a small pot. That way I can easily store it in the garage or the greenhouse over winter, whereas a 20 gallon pot, that's gonna be too large for me to move all the way downstairs. And also too large, I think, to fit in the mini greenhouse that I have that I was overwintering some of my plants for this past winter. And after asking, I think, a bunch of different people, but um, the main person was someone who actually runs a growing gardening center. And I was like, well, they probably know what they're talking about. They recommended starting smaller and then just potting up as they get larger. So my plan is to pot them up 
in these two plastic pots. Now I feel like they look larger on camera. They're maybe about 10 inches wide. So it'll still be, I mean, you can see the size difference there. It'll still be a lot larger than especially this smaller tree, but those are the pots I have on hand. Also, because they are plastic, it means they'll hold onto water a little bit better so they won't dry out as quickly. Plastic is also a lighter weight, so I can move that around easier. And lastly, if I do just leave these outside in the winter, like in the greenhouse, I know that they won't crack. So that is why I'm going with the smaller plastic pots for these two cherry trees. Um, so yes, I will be potting these two up here. And also another reason why I like that they're smaller is on the off chance that I realize this isn't going to work out. Um, like let's say next year, the year after, they still won't be huge, so it'll be a lot easier to give them to someone else. We'll obviously need to get it out of our house and transport it. Um, so I thought it was good to kind of start with something a bit smaller. The apple trees, again, I don't have them yet. I don't know how large they are going to be um, when I get them. I think they might still be relatively small. But on the flip side, I am also an impatient person. So because of that, I went to our local garden center and I got this beech plum tree slash bush. So this is already in, I think a 12 inch container. It's a few years old. I don't know how many years old, but obviously it is a lot larger than the cherry trees. And the garden center is incredibly helpful. So Gethsemane is the main one I go to here in Chicago. It's definitely the largest or it feels like the largest and the staff is always incredibly helpful. So I basically went in there and said, help me, what can I grow in a container on my deck? And there weren't a ton of options because I didn't wanna get, most of what they had there was already giant trees, which I couldn't transport here. And then obviously bringing them upstairs and getting them potted. Um, and a lot of them you needed a second tree. I was hoping to find one that again is self-pollinating that I can have up here just by itself. And that's when they recommended the beach plum. It is also labeled as a dwarf. I don't know if it was on here or on the price tag, but I think this one can also get up to five to seven feet or six to seven feet. Um, I'm planning again to prune it a little bit shorter than that. So I have to figure out how to prune these. They also talked about potentially root pruning down the line, but all of that I will worry about at a later date. So this is the information because after I got it, obviously they told me a lot of this on their own. Then I just basically went to the internet and looked up, how do I grow this thing in a container? Um, so first of all, again, it is self-pollinating. This one is zone three through six. So we are 6A, sometimes still feels like we are a five, but again, it's at least two growing zones colder. So in a container overwintering, this should be fine. This will be too large to put in the greenhouse. Again, probably too heavy to transport downstairs. So this one, like my blueberry and raspberry bushes, is just gonna be left outside all winter long. Um, this does grow more like a shrub than a tree, so I think that will be really good. The fruits on here are small, so they're not like the typical size plums. They're only about an inch in diameter, so I think that'll be really nice too, just to kind of pick as I'm going. These are also tart, so they would make good jams. Um, as far as growing, so these are native to the East Coast along beaches. That's why it's called the beach plum. So it's used to growing in very sandy, well-draining soil. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I have well-draining soil when I pot it. So I am gonna add some perlite. I also read on here, where was it? That they like slightly acidic soil. So I am gonna add a little bit of soil acidifier just like I do to my blueberries. And I think, that was all of the information on this tree. There are already buds starting to form. So I'm hoping that this flowers and just looks really beautiful. Even if I don't get fruit from it this year, I think I'll still be happy with the flowers on it. It'll just be really pretty in my garden. But yeah, we'll kind of see. I think this is gonna be the main test of how trees do because it is the oldest, the largest. If this doesn't seem like something that's gonna work for me up here, then I think that's probably gonna be a good sign about my cherry and apple trees and that maybe I should rehome them, but we'll see. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm very excited. Now, if you've ever grown any of these cherry trees or the beach plum in containers, or just grew them in general and have some tips, please, please let me know down below. That would be incredibly helpful. Um, so now let's go ahead and pot. It's still not raining. 
but I don't trust going outside to pot. I will do the cherry trees first because that'll be a lot easier. I'll probably add a little bit of perlite to those too, um, but they're not used to like the sandy soil like the plum tree, so not as much. Probably just use potting soil and some compost. And once everything is potted up, then I will get it moved outside. So let's go ahead and start making a mess inside. Here are my supplies. So I have the two pots for the two cherry trees. That metal container has my soil. I will definitely need a fresh bag for the plum tree. I have some compost there, which is actually mushroom compost that I got from, I'm gonna say Hidden Valley Ranch, but it's not, it's River Valley Ranch uh, in Lake Geneva and they make their own mushroom compost. I have perlite. That small bag right there is Biotone that I got at, is it the Grand Garden Show, I think? A sample of Biotone and then soil acidifier. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the cherry plants potted up. All right, so my cherry trees are both now planted. I always think whenever I carry up bags of potting soil, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much soil. Like I think I had three bags that fit in this tin and then I fill up these two pots and the tin is almost empty. So potting soil definitely goes very fast in your container garden, but it is exciting to have these up. I still need to label this one. I already gave a little label to this one. But next, we are going to pot up the big boy, the plum tree. Now I know this is going to be heavy, uh, whereas these two I can pick up. So what I'm gonna do is put it on wheels first. And actually, let me show you what I use. So these are the caddies that I showed in a different video. I now have both my blueberries on these rolling caddies. And I think that's all I have in the garden that's on these because those are the only ones in heavier pots. Um, with the cherry trees, obviously I can carry those. With my raspberry bushes, those are in plastic pots, so those are easy to transport around, but I'm assuming this plum tree is gonna be heavy, so it's gonna go on some wheels. And then hopefully, I can wheel it out to the back garden and out the door. Uh, that is something I don't think I mentioned. These are gonna go on my back deck, um, just because that's where I have space for them. Obviously my front deck has more of my raised beds. It has my flower cart and then out back I just have the raised beds along the back wall. So I think the trees will fit there a lot better than they would out front. Although it's not like the cherry trees are taking up that much space anyway right now. Um, but I'm going to clean up just a bit and then we'll get the plum tree potted. Now here is the pot I'm using. Now again, I think the camera makes it look gigantic. I mean, it is large. It is 22 inches in diameter. That is what was recommended. Well, technically 24 inches, but 22 is what I found with a drainage hole. Everyone should just start putting drainage holes with plugs into the containers because I found quite a handful that would have worked for the size, but had no drainage holes and I didn't feel like adding them myself. Um, this is from Home Depot. I think it was about $40 and it is resin. So despite its large size, I still can pick it up pretty easily on its own. But again, once it's filled with the soil and the plant, I think it might be too heavy for me to pick up, but we shall see. So this is gonna go onto the platform.
So I have regrets, nothing to do with the plum tree, but I do regret potting it inside, especially because it is still not raining. So I probably should have done this outside and made the mess out there, but that's what vacuum cleaners are for. So this is all potted up now. I'm going to attempt to wheel it now to the back deck and get this and the two cherry trees outside. Oh my gosh, I did it. It is outside. Now, if you can tell, the wheel base or the wheel caddy is slightly smaller than the bottom diameter of the pot. So what I'm gonna try to do is either find a caddy that's larger or get like a square piece of wood, put that on the caddy, put the pot on top of that, just so it balances a little bit easier, but that works for now. And then here are my two cherry trees. So that is really exciting. So I don't think I recommend potting up large fruit trees inside your home, uh, but I am gonna go clean that up now. That's why I don't get anything that's like expensive or nice up here. I mean, my rugs are like a couple hundred dollars, which is still expensive, but cheap for a rug. So if I get them dirty, I don't care. So I'm gonna go vacuum that up, put all of my bags away, and wait to see what happens with these fruit trees this year. So like I said, if you have any experience with any of these varieties, let me know down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.